This next video I'm going to do is going to be a LED floodlight install on my load trail 18 foot heavy equipment trailer. It's a 10K trailer. Uh, this is some of the stuff that I'm going to be using. Uh, we got some uh, wire, basically speaker wire. I ordered a couple lights off Amazon. I'll put links in the description. And then we got some uh, a terminal assortment kit, some shrink tubing, uh, soldering iron, some solder. Uh, the lights are pretty easy to put together. We got washers on both sides, and then the crushed washer goes on the main bolt, which goes through the middle and the bottom down here. And I'll kind of figure out how those are going to be placed as we go. And then uh, this thing's pretty cool here. It's uh, basically a 12 volt uh, key fob that turns on and off with uh, two separate key fobs there. So that'll be good. That way uh, I can turn it on when I want to and don't have to get out to hit a switch or anything like that. And then uh, heat shrink and uh, solder connection combo. That helps out quite a bit. And then uh, some heat shrink as well, plus some hand tools. Major part of this is gonna be the seven pin connector. Um, that's where all the pins go as far as the colors go. And then they should be labeled uh, on the inside as well. So this is my low trail seven pin uh, connector. And the center there is fake. It doesn't actually have an auxiliary charging port or utility port like it's supposed to. This is a real seven pin connector. So I believe the wire still has seven wires in there, but uh, I'm gonna cut it off and replace it so I can use that auxiliary center port as uh, for the floodlights. So this load trail trailer has been awesome to tow, awesome to work with. Uh, Hardly notice it's behind my truck a lot of times, but it's been an electrical nightmare since the day I got it. First time I used it, a uh, fuse blew on my truck, took it back to the dealer. They said it was my truck, blew another fuse the next time I used it, took it back again. There was a different crew working that day, and they did a diagnostic and found out that these two wires were just cut and left bare. They weren't um, shrink wrapped or anything like that, so that was shorting out the truck. And then there's more underneath. So this is the seven way uh, cord right here that comes back. It's the solid rubber one right here. And then there's a seven way connection here that actually only has six ports that are being used. And then there's three bare wires hanging out right there. So I'm definitely gonna get that addressed as well. Uh, I have done zero modifications to this trailer other than welding on some D-rings and adding a railing around the edge. So this is how it came from the factory or how they attempted to repair it when I took it to the dealer. So like I said, only six pins on that side, and then there's seven holes on this side. So I gotta figure out what goes where, and I'm probably just gonna cut all this out and uh, re-solder all of it so I know that it'll work right. So it looks like the red, white, and blue uh, wires there go up to the emergency brake right here. So as far as wiring goes, looks like red, white, and blue come out of the seven way. Black and blue go to the switch. And then you have white as a ground. So as far as the wiring goes, that's it. And then that white goes from the seven way to the ground right there. So as I unwrap it more, once again, I have not messed with this. This is how it came from the dealer. The red that comes out of the seven way is uh, shrink tubed and crimped onto a black, which I believe is the positive for the brake on the breakaway system. So I got that uh, connector cut off, got both the running lights uh, stripped. I just got to prep those and get them ready to solder together. Here's what that connector looked like. Six pins on one side and then red, white, and blue bare wires hanging out the other side. So I've got the seven-way plug there, chopped it off. That's the outside of the new one. 
the inside of the new one's actually labeled. I don't know if you guys can see it. All the way around which colors go where. And then I'm just going to have to plumb that into the brake system. So this kind of turned into an electrical nightmare, but I have all the kinks worked out now with some help from family. So I uh, figured out all the uh, colors, where they should go. I'll go over that when I climb underneath. But um, one of the things that's important to take into account for is the orientation of your seven-way on your vehicle. So this one actually opens sideways. So you need to take an account for that when you're wiring it. Top isn't top, top is actually on the right. So I plugged it in and uh, with it orientated like it was vertical and it ended up blowing fuses on the truck and I didn't realize that. So then the whole lighting system shut down the trailer. So I'm gonna go over the fuses on the, this is a 2010 F-150. So there's the fuse panel page, uh, fuse panels in the under the hood. Uh, take pause it if you need to, or take a screenshot if you need to look up numbers. I'll go over the ones with the trailer real quick. So the ones that I need to make sure were intact are going to be 31. That's your main fuse. It's supposed to be a 20 amp, and then your other fuse. I believe that that runs um, one runs running lights and brake lights which i think are both mandatory and then the other one runs i believe turn signals and uh maybe the brakes um and then we had to buy a fuse for spot 21 which is going to be your 12 volt output and then you also need to put a relay here in spot nine for uh, 12 volt output as well. I actually don't have heated mirrors and I had a relay in the heated mirror spot So I just moved that flipped it and put that in spot 9 for the relay And then that enabled the 12 volt power going to the trailer also So I was not getting 12 volt power immediately and then uh, I did some quick searches and found out that I needed to make sure that I had all this in place so once I got that in place then I had 12 volt output on the uh, trailer seven way so now I have it wired in so that the battery for the breakaway system is actually charging and then the floodlights that I'm going to install will also run off that 12 volt system so like I said this kind of turned into a headache yesterday but to go over all the wiring you got seven wires coming out of the truck so blue is going to be your brakes uh, white's going to be your ground brown's going to be your running lights yellow and green are going to be your left and right turn signals and then the red here is going to be your 12 volt power only if you have that relay and that fuse in place i ended up testing all of them on the back of the truck and uh, figured out which ones were which and uh, blew a fuse in the process which kind of threw a wrench into things but figured that out eventually so my 12 volt power i have coming in and then uh, that's going to go to uh, the box for the remote which is going to be red in and then uh, white's going to go out blue is the antenna and then the two blacks are going to be uh, grounds they're already grounded with the rest of them and then uh, the power out goes back through the same uh, quick disconnect and then that's going to splice off and go into both of my floodlights So I've already tested the trailer. I know it all works. Now it's getting uh, 12 volt power to the uh, breakaway brake. So uh, that actually shows a charging light now. It's never shown that before. So that battery's never been charged in the three years I've owned this trailer. Uh, now I have this uh, big uh, shrink tubing. I'm gonna couple all these wires together neatly and then uh, shrink that tubing over that. What's up, Hank?
Also on the power out to the lights, I'm going to add an uh, inline fuse, just uh, extra protection. So this is the receiver for the, the key fob. And then the blue line here is the antenna, so that needs to be able to get a signal easily. So you kind of want this exposed, but not so bad that it's gonna get smashed. I'm just gonna zip tie it onto the side of the uh, breakaway box here. So now all I have left to do is uh, this inline fuse here is going to have the uh, wires ran off of it to wire in the floodlights. So all those wires are tucked away pretty neat. Um, still leaving a couple exposed so that I can test uh, that fuse after I get all the uh, wires ran for the floodlights. So rather than separating Rather than separating all this wire, I'm just going to run the negative right back, uh, or the ground right back up here to ground where everything else does instead of at the light. So now I've got the wires ran, which is speaker wire. I'll put uh, links in the description. I'm going to put a quick disconnect on each one of those for the lights. In case the light goes bad, I don't have to solder anything on the trailer. I can just pop the new uh, light on without an issue. And I got another one ran about the same on the other side. There's clips underneath, and I uh, ran it over the axles, obviously. Now that all those grounds are secure, I'm going to take the two positives and connect those into the output on the fob box.
Sunday with us caught in all these. Maybe right here on the corner. Because uh, your rear tire on your trailer is your pivot point for when you're backing up. So that's where you need the most light, just to be able to see right there. So I'm going to put one on each side right there. Black's going to be your negative. I got that wired up up front like I just showed you. And then red's going to be your positive, which goes to that fob box, which will turn it on and off. Just as a rule of thumb, I do the uh, accessories on the female side. And all the power output always goes on the male side. So I'm going to go ahead and solder these together. Now I'm going to do the uh, output end. I forgot to put shrink tubing on the one, but no big deal. You really don't need it. These uh, these adapters do uh, the job just fine. And this one I'm actually going to do both at once because uh, probably be a little bit faster. Looks like those red ones are going to be a little bit too small. So ultimately the lights got it up mounted about like that. Just got to grab a drill bit and drill out the center. There's just too much steel down there to uh, try and keep drilling through that. Plus it's going to be almost impossible to get a nut on the back. So I'm just going to go through the fender here and mount the light like this. Should be much easier. All I did was hold the light up there and then snuck a pick in there and scratched the hole so I know where center is for that uh, mounting bolt.
washer not on the back about like that's how it's gonna end up I have an aiming bow right there that should be good so now I'm gonna tighten down these adjuster screws here and make sure you put the bolt in first before you tighten those down Completed product on the one side.